Hey y'all, welcome to today's video. So today I want to talk about generating demand for your product or service in small business. Welcome everyone. So some of you are like me and live in a small enough city to where it's very quiet, but you have everything that you need to thrive and survive here. But sometimes you like to travel, you know, maybe an hour or two away to another city that has a greater variety of things. So in these larger cities, you would see a greater variety of brick and mortar retail stores, movie theaters, and restaurants with type of foods that you wouldn't have in your hometown. Sometimes we know the answers to why these things weren't available in lower population areas. So the theaters that had larger seating capacity, more screens, they, they would just never fill up. Stores sell clothing that wouldn't be in style or food that not enough people in our area like to justify the cost of bringing it to market. Other times it's not so immediately clear as to why these things would not work in smaller markets. Maybe it's been tried before and it just failed. I know in our case we've had some great restaurants open here in town, but they don't stay open very long. They have great food, great service, and I really enjoy going to them because there's typically, in my town at least, no wait time on busy time. So on a Saturday night when you want to go out and eat, there's typically very little to no wait. I enjoy those and try to support them, but I almost know they're living on borrowed time. Even one of the best seafood restaurants that started in a city about 60 miles from me opened a location here in town. It was wonderful, but the city just didn't support it. I don't know why. The city here would rather go to a chain restaurant. So when you went to that chain restaurant on a Saturday night, there was on an average two to three hour wait where you could literally go across the street to this other restaurant and the restaurant had no wait and much better food. This restaurant had a great atmosphere on the riverfront, served the best seafood in town, and even had a market where you could buy this and take it home. The best feature about the restaurant was that you could actually pull up on your pontoon boat dock behind the restaurant, and typically they had live music going on on their back patio on every weekend night. In the end, local appetites just weren't up to it, and the chain seafood place right across the street won that battle, and they're still open today with a two to three hour wait, even more due to recent staffing shortages. With the advancement in technology over the past 20 to 30 years, rarely now do we need to make those shopping trips to nearby metropolitan areas. One reason for this is that so many of the products we used to shop for are now available online through places like Amazon and other online retailers, and they're sent directly to our door without any need to travel. Add to that the culture change that came about with COVID-19, and you can see even fewer people from my area travel outside to larger metropolitan areas now. Things like home grocery and restaurant food delivery that previously wouldn't have been successful in my area now exist, thrive, and survive. Some of these are locally based, others are branches of national organizations, but either way they're supporting local people in the gig economy. When we used to make those shopping center trips, we weren't often there for things we knew about. A lot of times we would see things that we never knew existed, and we depended on salespeople to tell us about them. Half of the battle of getting someone to buy your product is for them just to simply know that it exists. Even in online marketplaces, suggestions are part of the norm now, so that where you're at least aware of what products are available. But now that could take hours, where we used to we had an understanding of the range of products that were available even in large big box stores within about 30 minutes or so. There still exists a problem of knowing that even certain product categories are available. This also applies to advertising and how that arena has changed. For many years, my city wasn't even covered by a local television station. We had to rely on television stations from adjoining markets. So watching those television stations, we would only see commercials for that local area, not for businesses that were located in my immediate area. Any local commercials that were seen were actually on cable television, and even that company didn't reach very far outside the city limits. A five minute drive from where I grew up meant that you were either using an antenna or you were on a large satellite system with pretty much no local connection at that point. In those days, you were left with radio, newspaper, billboards, and even phone book advertising were seen as the only ways to target immediate local areas. Plenty of people lived here, it was just their shopping habits were different. They might shop in our city, but those were the only ways to reach them. Fast forward about 30 years, and most everyone now watches one of more available streaming platforms. Even if they watch TV at all, a lot of times people just simply watch on their devices instead of a TV. Maybe you sit down to watch a movie on TV, but most of your short viewing under, say, two hours would be on a device. What this means is that we don't often see advertisements for new products or services, whether that be nationwide or local. If we do happen to see an ad, it's for a new product typically, or for a service that's based in a city far away. 
while we're driving around in our cars. We either listen to music stored on a phone, satellite radio, and again, we use those services just due to a lack of commercials. You don't have to hear the advertising. Terrestrial radio can't cater in the same way that an iPod can to individual music tastes. The degree of isolation from advertising recently hit me like a ton of bricks. A friend was asking my wife in casual conversation lately about a recent commercial that had come across. She said that she hadn't seen it, but what actually tickled my business sense was that she said, you know, I guess I haven't seen a commercial for about two to three years. The TV that my daughter watches isn't even connected to my satellite subscription. Most of the time she's just watching streaming things on there. To her, she can always find something that she wants to watch, and she has different varieties of programming to choose from, and she doesn't have a concept of looking through a channel lineup to find what she wants to watch. When she's somewhere without this setup, she has a tablet with all the same apps loaded on it, and she just picks up where she left off when she was at home. So this begs an important question. How can these people be reached, the people who don't watch broadcast TV, the people who don't listen to broadcast radio, who are basically unreachable by advertising? So in my daughter's case, she sees toys at a local bookstore that pique her interest and she then puts them on a birthday or Christmas list. And the local bookstore just happens to sell toys because we don't have a store in town that sells toys exclusively anymore. Sometimes she learns about these toys from her friends. Sometimes her Christmas list leaves us struggling to understand what she's even asking for, much less where to find it. So despite all this modern technology, some segments of the population are only reached through methods prior to the dawn of radio and television. Somewhat. For my wife, she spends a decent amount of time on social media and only sees what her friends post or targeted ads from local businesses and products available from a web retailer. Sometimes these ads on social media are simply from local brick and mortar retail stores that say, we have product on the shelf, not we necessarily have specific products. Some of those ads do include products that specifically are on sale. So there is an exception to that rule. More or less, these stores are saying, we're still here and you can buy from us. So I know that's a lot of build-up that doesn't really lead into the title of this video, but trust me, I'm getting there. I've spoken in other videos about the need for local market knowledge, and this can be a great sidebar of things that you need to have a grasp on to be successful. People are different, and different types of advertising reach them. To tell people you have a product or service available, you need to know where they look. This is also a point highlighted in the book $100 Startup Under 7 Steps to Instant Market Testing, which I've also done a video on. Knowing how to reach people and the limitations of those mediums is a critical step to generating demand. I've also put a link to my Amazon affiliate link where you can purchase a copy of the $100 startup for yourself. This book was life-changing for me and I highly recommend that everybody give it a read if you're beginning to start your own micro business or bootstrapping a small business. So this is by no means a new concept and countless dollars have been spent on reaching the unreached. There's even an entire category of economists that study the demand side of economics and how they're manifest in price and supply. While not needing to go that far, generating demand might help you reach into the markets that previously wouldn't have been successful for you. In the case of the seafood restaurant, most people just simply forgot that it was even there. It wasn't very visible from the road, it was kind of down in a hole by itself, and absolutely zero advertisements around town for it. Again, 60 miles away, they were well known. Uh, they'd been a fixture in the restaurant community for probably the past 50 or 60 years. They had a few billboards, but not a lot. It was one of those kind of places where everybody knew what it was, and that's where they went. So word of mouth was their strongest method of advertising. But breaking into that new market was tricky for them. I became a street preacher for this restaurant. Basically, I dragged every single member of our circle of friends to this restaurant any chance that I got, just so that they could experience how good the food was and how short the wait times were. I might have had other financial problems in the mix considering that they were about 300 miles from the coast and probably one of the only seafood restaurants up here that actually did fresh seafood. They brought it in, they had trucks running back and forth every day bringing in fresh seafood from the coast and from other places. So it was a little bit more expensive and their supply lines could be constricted by storms and other things. Granted, there was that challenge of being so far inland, but just 60 miles closer to the coast, they had multiple locations that had thrived for a number of years and some I believe as far as 50 years back. 
So in this restaurant's case, maybe it could have been successful using unconventional tactics. So I want you to think along the lines out in the restaurant industry, it would be weird to reduce the hours that you're open or even the days that they're open, or maybe even offering a more focused menu. I loved watching Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares because those were the first things that he did when he went into a restaurant. He trimmed their menu down. He said, you only buy what's local and what's fresh. He stuck to a small set of principles that he had proven time and time again would make a successful restaurant. Again, you don't have to be the most varied and the most widespread but be focused, know what your local people eat, know what their appetites are, and do that best. Don't try to be good at a lot of things, be the best at one or two. The other thing that they could do was possibly be con more consistent with their live entertainment. We do have a slate of local talent around, and a lot of people work for very cheap here, so maybe that would have been a good idea to just make sure that everybody was lined up, book your stuff out a month or a couple of months in advance and then have standbys and backups, people that you can always call to provide entertainment. But you're not providing entertainment every night, mostly on weekend nights when people tend to go out and want the experience more so than they're just hungry and want to go eat. There are always ways to fix an existing business, but when you're starting a new business, you have an advantage because you already know what the habits are, you know how habits might have changed over the past few years and what they are now. So if you're wanting to get into a restaurant, maybe you don't have to have a restaurant in itself. Maybe a food truck's a better idea. I will admit that I chuckled a little bit that here in my rural southern city that a mobile dog grooming service was available until I saw a Facebook post not too long ago of somebody asking, hey, did you happen to have their number? I would like to use them. So if you learn of a new or innovative service offering that's outside your area, you might want to spend a little bit of time investigating what the sizzle is. What makes this venture successful? and what needs is it solving? Much like the person that says, I wasn't poor until someone told me, you want to be the person that tells them how they can't live without what you have to offer. Once you have the what and the how, then you can begin the journey of bringing it to fruition. Again, starting any business is a risky proposition, but following the tenets of a bootstrapping approach can reduce your risk and lead to a greater chance of success. I love it when I see local offerings that are risky, things that are outside the norm, things that are outside of the realm of what you know would be successful. So even these trailblazers, when they start out, they may not know it, but even if they fail, they're still contributing to the greater business community because they provide data that wasn't previously available before. I know here in my town personally, one lady with a hot dog cart changed the food truck industry. She started it by herself single-handedly. Everybody laughed at her. Everybody said, nobody's going to walk around downtown and buy carts off of a hot dog. Again, this is a small city where you tended to go into a cafe or an established restaurant, not a larger city where food trucks or hot dog carts were known. So what I'd like you to take away from the video is this. You might have a great innovative offering in your area, but most people just simply don't know exist. This is your job to let them know that it's there and why it's awesome. If you can do that and learn how to do it well, others will follow behind you. You'll be a trailblazer. Hey, I'd like to take a second just to say thank you for watching my video. Make sure you please like and subscribe, and when you get a moment, check out my website, CamelliaStartup.com.